Let's keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I'm good. We are back here on the touchline and still we are discussing Mada's football and everything that is happening all around the world when it comes to rugby, football and that is what we are putting our major focus in. I'm Robert Osoro as usual. Maxwell Wasike is here with us today and also joining us here after some time is Ngaro Kamunya who is the director 270 Degrees Sports Marketing and Consultancy firm. Ngaro, it's been a long time. Welcome back to the Touchline. Thank you very much. I think uh, yeah. when I was thinking about it this week, maybe it's been about two months. Two months. Two and a half months. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's good to be back. Uh, <laughs> I firmly believe Saturday is all about sports. Or the weekend oh, is all about <laughs> the sports. The weekend is all about sports. So it feels good to be yeah. back. I, I learned something. I think it is uh, Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, in Australia, uh, all TV channels and everything, they do their news and everything up to Friday. Mm -hmm. The moment it kicks Saturday, mm -hmm. all the way to Sunday, it's all about Sports. Actually, from Friday evening. Yeah. No right. one cares yeah. about yeah. politics and everything. Nope. It's all about sports. Yeah. Should we go the same route as well? Is it possible? It's is possible. it practical locally? It is practical yeah. locally. Um, let me tell you, the two things that move the emotion of a person mm -hmm. in this order for me is uh, sports. Uh, then there's a basically what you can call entertainment uh -huh. in terms of music and film and and. and Yes. And, sorry, music and film. Yeah. And then number three for me is politics. Yeah. Uh, but I always get the feeling that because um, of the nature of our politicians in Kenya, <laughs> you want to focus on politics as much as you can. Yes. So that you grip your people and have your people just focusing on that. Yet there are very many things mm -hmm. to be um, desired out of the other two things I've mentioned. Case in point, mm -hmm. whenever you travel out of town, on the weekend, yes, Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. guaranteed you are going to see a sport being played. Sure, yeah. It's either you see volleyball being played, or mm -hmm. see some guys playing football, or you see some guys playing netball. Yeah. That's a pastime that guys use. Mm -hmm. That's a pastime that is there. Yes. So sport already has that effect on our people. Yeah. Um, it's just number one, of course, our managers. You just get the feeling that the guys who get in the management management of sports in Kenya yeah. are using it as a Bench. A stepping stone. Yeah. Talking about two months ago, I've remembered when we were here, mm -hmm. we were doing the preview of basketball. Yes. <laughs> the yes. NBA final yes. leg. And our team won. Uh, uh, oh, you know, that was my team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, the NBA has won. Yes. Uh, in all honesty, the people are supporting throughout the beginning, from the beginning of the season of the LA Clippers. Yes. Um, uh -huh. They've been the least dominant team in LA. Yeah. And then um, I'm one of those guys who likes. Two, what we call two-way players. Uh -huh. You know, I, I was thinking about it the other day. Football is the only sport where people are classified as per their roles. Yes. Defenders, midfielders, yeah. and attackers. Right. Yes. Their departments. The goalkeeper, their departments, exactly. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, many other sports, um, it's you do both. Yeah. So you defend and you attack. Right. Yeah. In rugby, it's the same. Yeah. In, in, in basketball, it's that way. Yeah. And to your point, I always, I've always liked two-way players, uh -huh. like uh, players who are dominant on offense and dominant on defense. Uh -huh. And for me, I think in the league right now, the person who exemplifies that is Kawhi Leonard. Uh -huh. So yeah. when he moved from Toronto Raptors, yeah. he went to, uh, to LA, LA Clippers, and then yeah. of course he was joined by Paul George, uh -huh. who's also an excellent two-way player. Yeah. Uh, Patrick Beverly. I'm a guy who likes defense. Like yes. for me, defense wins championships. Uh -huh. yeah. So when they didn't make it to the finals, I was like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> talking about basketball. I yeah. think it's the game that was popular in on locally. Yes. I think there have been efforts to restore the lost glory of the sport. I don't know. What do you make of, you know, the commitment by the administrator so far? You see, um, the reason why basketball, and we're talking about maybe, let's go to back 20 years ago. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the reason I firmly believe that basketball was the second most popular sport. Sure, locally. Uh, locally after yes. football. The biggest reason, of course, was the global reach that the game had. Yeah. You had the most iconic athlete in the world, not only in America, in Michael Jordan, being a basketball player. Everyone wanted to be like him. 
we were talking i mean we were laughing the last time we were here how yeah, yeah. the impact that jordan had in yeah. terms of to date mm. if you go to a kinyozi his influence is so massive you know jordan <laughs> the kinyozi <laughs> <laughs> actually that name yeah. came as a result of him yes, yes. because of the bolt <laughs> yeah ah. yeah you see yeah, yeah, guys as, you know they <laughs> they won't know who michael jordan is but yes. they'll know what that means mm -hmm. so i think it was because that was the number one thing i mean yes. they go, the game had gone global mm -hmm. and then um uh, there's there's actually ridiculous talent in basketball in yes. kenya <laughs> and I remember even way late 90s to up to the mid 2000s uh basketball was actually a very super thriving sport yeah and then like is always the case uh, actually the Moranda <laughs> traveling to rwanda for mm. the afro the fiba afro basket qualifiers and they'll be playing the likes of senegal tunisia and algeria mm -hmm. in that one but let's come back to our major talking point that for this segment you are running order yes <laughs> That was a little bit of digression. <laughs> yeah, that's what I don't know. But uh, coming back to everything that we were supposed to discuss was yesterday, mm -hmm. uh, breaking news was uh, the chairman of uh, Kenya Premier League clubs are not now content with how the president is running the federation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the football Kenya fr president, Nick Mwendo, went for the election. He was there in the battle. He won the battle. He won the war. They voted spectacularly re-elected spectacularly <laughs> re-elected like 97 <laughs> percent yeah. yeah and the rumor mill has it that uh, some of these delegates were given money mm. they were put on uh, five star hotels mm. three star hotels where they stayed comfortably mm -hmm. and they voted a day prior the polls yes mm. and they voted for the agenda of president nick Mwendo. Mm -hmm. now they get into the office the president is coming on with his agenda and they look at it and they're like, no way. It can't can happen. What is wrong with us? You <laughs> see, what? It's a rumor uh, about the money that they were given. It's yes. a rumor about them being picked up in hotels. Uh, but it's a rumor, I believe, 150%. <laughs> to be true. <laughs> yes. Uh, because I've seen the nature of sports politics. In yes. Kenya. Um, I had a conversation yesterday with somebody who were talking about yeah. investing in in sports in kenya yeah uh, from perfect pers private perspective uh -huh. um this guy is south african based but he's yes. zimbabwe uh -huh. and he was telling me how they did uh, mandatory corporate governance courses for yes. all the sports clubs in zimbabwe uh -huh. and he was trying to tell me that maybe if you think about bringing that to kenya i told him there's no way it's going to work in kenya it was actually brought when uh March uh, set up studios in Kenya, and uh, some of the big uh, food, uh, sports runners in the country were taken to South Africa to study. Let me tell you, Robert. They they came back. Every and, uh, every sporting organization in this country has a corporate governance guideline. Yes, but it is because of the politics that is behind the elections that goes into getting these officials in office. Yes, that the corporate governance rules are done away with. Now throw them out of the throw window. Them, uh, out, of, out of the out of the window. Let's yeah. get back to the topic that you're talking about. Yeah. Now, um, I don't know what these delegates expected. Yes. Um, you know what was going to happen. You, myself, Maxwell, yourself, we're not shocked about the move that Nick Mwendo, Nick Mwendo was pulled. Yes. Um, it's textbook Nick Mwendo. Yes. Uh, it was going to happen. Yeah. So when they sit down here and they start making noise about oh. This is not what you had promised us. Of course, it's an election. I will promise you. And even we can't sympathize with and them. I cannot sympathize with them. I will mm -hmm. promise you whatever. Hey, we were promised five stadiums. Huge parks. Yes. Well, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. We were promised laptops. Ten yes. years ago. Mm -hmm. I will give you the promises that you want. Yes. It's like, and excuse my comparison, it's yeah. like tuning a chick. Yeah. It's like hitting on a girl. Yes. Mm -hmm. You Promises. You sell promises. Yeah. You even say you own international life. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> pledges are palatable, man. You and Chris Grubi are partners. <laughs> but uh, it's not the actual now, case. The, the, the question is, they're talking about now going back mm -hmm. to the... They're saying that uh, the, as the Kenya Premier League, they need to have their own AGM mm -hmm. to decide the way forward. Just put it into perspective for us. Mm -hmm. When... Uh, October 20th, uh, I think when that contract came to an end, uh -huh. and now we said that Kenya Premier League is done and it has been taken over by okay. Football Kenya Federation and it will be run under Football Kenya Federation. 
do these clubs have a mandate now under Kenya Premier League or that company see, is done? You see, um, first, yeah. let it be known yeah. that KPL's powers are derived from FKF. Yes. yes. FKF is the one who's mandated to run the game of football in Kenya. Yeah. The Kenya Premier League is their uh, crown. It's a subordinate entity to it, it, FKF. It's, it's their crown jewel, for lack of a better word. Yes. And I think that's why they privatized. Mm -hmm. And by privatized, I mean the, forming the, K, the, the, the company yes. to run the KPL. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the truth is also at the time when the KPL was being formed, mm -hmm. the, the Limited was being formed, or the LLC was being formed, sorry, yeah. I beg your pardon. Um, our sports laws did not allow any sporting organization to own assets. Uh -huh, yes. So uh, that was, I think uh, we're back uh, in two or five. Uh, exactly, and also an even, an even contract and and, and yes. get into mm -hmm. intellectual. I mean, own intellectual property rights. Yes. Own any asset, basically. Uh -huh. Our laws. It's a sports act that has changed that, but our laws do not allow for that. So. Yeah. I think that was one of the reasons for the formation of the KPL. Osoro, you and I have covered, you know, football so much. I know Haru is coming from the background of those elite disciplines, rugby, basketball. <laughs> but I don't know, how, how massive is football? Because uh, we haven't witnessed, you know, a lot of back and forth, a game of musical chairs in other disciplines when it comes to management and running of the league, like rugby, where you come from, cricket, mm -hmm. you know, these other sporting disciplines. But football, it's been like... It's a habit. Come on. You know, first, yeah, um, in year out. First, you need to accept the fact that football is the most popular sport in the country. Yes. Um, look at the sheer size of the number of leagues that you have, the number of tournaments that you have, the number of players that you have. Yes. Uh, naturally, it's going to have a very wide reach. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, once you discuss that in terms of the reach, um, what I've come to discover is that. A lot of politicians also use football for campaign. Yeah. Because it has a grassroots effect. When you go to your Shags Maxwell, I bet you you won't walk a kilometer to find a football pitch. Sure. You'll have a football but playground. Somewhere. Yeah. That's how that's the reach that football has. Yeah. And because of the lack of visionary leadership that we have that we have in this country. Yes. The lack that is. Mm -hmm. Then we are unable to package this potential that is there in terms of football mm -hmm. to make it workable yeah and that is the biggest that's why for rugby i mean after after the election you see <laughs> but during the last ele this fkf election yeah. there was a debate about uh, one of the candidates and people were saying um Herbert Mochiro. he's coming from he's rugby background fine yeah. he's coming from rugby but that was not even the biggest thing I yeah. to <laughs> that was you know that was the story yeah and I remember sitting down somewhere when that was said, and I asked, um, while the players can be from, uh, what's the word, from, uh, not from privileged backgrounds. Yes. The players. Yeah. The management is never from such backgrounds. Yeah. Think about it world True. over. World right. World over. Yeah. And the management being not from those backgrounds, I think is what makes football a success in other countries. Yeah. When you have Kyle Hans Ruminaga as the chairman of Bayern, Bayern Munich, yeah. yes, he might have had a trouble upbringing when he was at Bayern Munich. Yeah. But of course, because of the professional setup that Germany has in terms of football, yeah. he's able to understand these things and take in these things. And Kyle Hans Ruminaga as the president of Bayern Munich is no longer the Kyle Hans Ruminaga. He's changed. He's crossed over. Yes. From the playing side, from the tough upbringing, yes, to a now a corporate figure. Yeah. LeBron James. Yeah. Uh, you know he's a shareholder of Liverpool. Not too yeah. many guys know that. I think yes. he owns about 2% of Liverpool. Yes. But, same thing. Yeah. He came from a troubled background. Yeah. He never I even finished Jordan school. Himself. Yeah, they never... Jordan, okay, Jordan was at least... At least. Yeah. LeBron never even finished school. Like, he yeah. couldn't even afford to go to school. Yeah. But when he finishes his playing career, and if he goes into ownership or management, yeah. he will have crossed over onto this, this other side. So we need to do away this narrative that because football is a mta game, mm -hmm. then the leadership has to be mta. And especially this theory and tired line of, you know, football has to be administered by former no, players, you know, ex-internationals. No, it, doesn't, it doesn't make you, you being a former player doesn't make you a good manager. A good manager when um, it comes to the game. Jose Mourinho never played football. Yes. One of the best coaches we've seen him. Mm -hmm. Alex Ferguson was not the best player in Scotland. Yeah. By far the best manager we ever saw in England. Yeah. Now, the, the question was, well, mm -hmm. when, when this story broke out, every, we were on social media last night and everybody was talking. One of, one of my friends, uh, Francis Ngira, uh, said this. 
it is high time now this chairman realize that you make a decision you stay with that Thank decision you. you stick with that decision mm -hmm. we had candidates outside here people mm -hmm. every candidate was outside here and we said every candidate came out with his manifesto and all that mm -hmm. and everybody took a stand mm -hmm. and they said this is the guy now it is his time it is second time mm -hmm. go and do your your job yeah it is that time our leaders now take that stand because mm -hmm. if it's if Nick Mwenda come with me, takes us to the greener pastures, mm -hmm. well, and well and good. good. Yeah. If he takes us to the Tatars, it is the decision they made and they've got to live with it. They have to, you have to live with the decision. I mean, that's life. It's yes, in yes. everything, even us personally. Yeah. We have to, we have to live with the decisions that we make. Yeah. Um, I always say that uh, in whatever situation you are, yeah. whether right or wrong, in, mm -hmm. in whatever bad situation you are, yes. whether right or wrong, you had something to do with it. Yeah you are a big contributor mm -hmm. to that to you being in that situation yeah and that's the case here uh -huh. if football deteriorates for the next four years yeah it will be qualified for afcon um 20 22 2021 sorry yes, yes. it will qualify for afcon 2021 yeah wait guys didn't it go four years no it's yeah. after every two years oh. world cup is 2022 <laughs> qatar okay yeah, fair yeah, enough yeah, yeah. uh it will go to every two years yes. um we then you have another 228 million shilling scandal, or <laughs> million shilling scandal. Yeah. which can't be accounted yeah. for which cannot be accounted for yeah. you have to deal with your choices of consequences yeah. yes. line, you know? uh -huh. they have to they have to realize that like you said uh -huh. there were people who are on the ballot who probably had better manifestos uh, but you decided to go back with but the question i keep asking myself what's the role of government in all this because it looks like you know the government through Minister of Sports remain silent whenever these debacles arise. Government is it high time they also stamp authority no, no, and crack the whip? No, government should never interfere. Mm -hmm. um, let it be. Yeah. You are the one who made the decision. You you live with it. Government should uh -huh. never interfere. Yes. Government should never interfere yeah. with uh, with with the running of sports. Yes, um, it's not their mandate to do so. Mandate. Their mandate for them is to just put in place an enabling and conducive environment exactly. for sports yeah. to thrive. Exactly, it's not for them to interfere with the management. It's not for them to get into uh, FKF's affairs. Uh, FKF's affairs are firmly in the delegates' hands. Yes, and they're the ones who make the decisions, and unfortunately, they have to live with it. And it is going to be happening to them. Let, let, let's finish that conversation and we end it there. Mm -hmm. But there, there is one thing that uh, you were talking with us off the camera mm -hmm. when, when we were talking about uh, the South African billionaire, mm -hmm. Motsepe. Motsepe, yes. Yeah, who was planning to Patrick, run for yeah. Patrick Motsepe. And it looks like a lot of football fans <laughs> have embraced his candidacy. Come on. Uh, it is a billionaire. That's what we were at the top of the. Uh, Being a billionaire and having management competence also yeah, are two separate. At the things. top of the mountain. That is a very good for some of us who want to say we need to go corporate and mm -hmm. private investing mm -hmm. in clubs and in full and in sports in general. You see, Motsepe owns the Mamelodi Sundowns. Yes. Um, first, for you to have money to invest in sports, you've made money elsewhere. Yes. Uh, let's start there. Uh -huh. I test that sports is a business, and you see the potential, and you're like, okay, fine, I can invest ten million dollars uh -huh. there. Yeah. To get to that point, um, Max you're a very good manager sure trust me yeah. um because you're managing people yeah you haven't gotten you know it's not <laughs> engaged and his club is also doing very well yeah it's not like uh, kenyan uh, billionaires who make their money off looting funds. yes uh -huh. fine he might have that contract or two that favored him but it's about he's built as well yeah so he understands the money. same thing as the mohammed duji uh -huh. for simba simba in, yes. in tanzania so um, the good thing about people like Motsepe getting into the management is they understand at least the business side. I mean, that's what I always yes. say. Yeah. The commercial side. The commercial sport. side of the sport. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, this is why we make, we make Wazungus look very good. I was looking at um, Anfield's layout. Uh -huh. Like, just looking at the stadium layout and yes. they can do anything in, like that in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Boys, save for the 40 corporate boxes they have. These guys have like 10 lounges. Yeah. My goodness. There's a bus, there's a what, there's a what. Mm -hmm. You know, you can go to Anfield just for a hangout. Like, we live here, we want to go have a yeah. beer. Yes. Without, going to, without watch, going to watch going a game, game, you know. So, yeah. 
we, 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 we need guys who understand the business aspect. It was the same the game. Thing, by the way, uh, during Rugby Africa's elections, I remember having a conversation with one of Rugby Africa's sponsors. Yeah. And they were very keen on having a sub-Saharan person at the helm of Rugby Africa mm-hmm. because they wanted somebody who understood the commercial aspect of sports. Mm-hmm. So Patrick Mosepe understands that. Yes. Um, and he understands business. Yeah. So maybe it's time for such people to get it. And for someone with the caliber of Patrick Mosepe, is coming at the helm of African football, not to gain from African football, mm-hmm. but to add value uh-huh. to African football. Exactly. For him, it's value add. He can comfortably sit down in Josie, in Joburg, or wherever he is. Yeah. He can comfortably sit there and leave. <laughs> with his big. He's not, he's not <laughs> joining football as uh, a stepping stone no, to no, no, no. richness. You see, he's you already see. a tycoon. Yeah. yeah. That's why Tanzania is actually beating us at the moment. Mm. Because Tanzania have actually embraced that commercial aspect of the game. They have copied the PSL blueprint. Mm. They actually hired mm. someone from PSL mm. Limited to come and run mm. the Tanzanian. Premier yeah, he was the former CEO of Younger. Yes. He is now running the Tanzanian Premier League. And by the way, talking about it, yeah. there was one of their much hyped derby, Simba and Younger. Yes. And I saw, you know, celebrities, those musical yeah, icons, <laughs> donning jerseys for, you know, <laughs> different teams. And Kenyans, you know, trying to say, come on, Let Kenyan celebs. Story, guys. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This is two days ago. Yes. Um, so one of my friends who's very keen also in the sporting space from a business perspective, we were talking, he has an investment banking background. Mm-hmm. He worked with Stan, uh, Stanbeck. Yes. And Mohamed Duji was one of their clients. <laughs> so yeah. basically, Mohamed Duji is like, they made their wealth like Bitco, uh-huh. food products yes, and all yes. that. Yeah. And he took over the company from his father. Yeah. And what he did is that uh, he contracted now the investment bank wing of Stan Church. Mm-hmm. Stan Beck, Stan Beck, Beck bank, yeah. To restructure his to corporate to restructure his corporate organization yeah so they did that mm-hmm. and he flew them to tanzania for a party when it was already done yeah <laughs> wow sat down. this is like five six years ago yeah they sat down and um Mohamed Duji tells them that uh, the next place um, he's going to his sports yes and he tells me that this guy is an addict of this that magazine called the business insider uh-huh. He's always reading it. He's always yeah. reading it. Uh-huh. And all he did is that he read and he saw. I I was even looking at a list this week, by the way. Yes. Of the 100, the top 100 billionaires in the world, uh-huh. 30 are sports team owners. Sure. Yes. yes. That's and true. I think he saw that and he's like, I. The see. likes of Roman Abramovich. Yeah, Abramovich, yeah. Alicia Uzmanov, yes. Yes. Frank, yeah. um, Sheikh Al Mansur. Uh, the Glazer family. The Glazer family. Yeah. Um, pa, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting. Uh, Dan Gilbert, the yeah. owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yes. All those guys are there. Mm-hmm. So he's, he's like, hey, how, come? how comes? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, let me tell you, eh, yeah. even for Stan Kroenke, it's yeah. the same thing he got into Arsenal. Uh-huh. He was really an investor in American sports. Yes. He had gone to Hong Kong. He had a baseball team. He, no, still had a he, baseball has, a, team. he has a football team, team. the uh-huh. LA Rams. Yes. He has a basketball team, the Denver Nuggets. Yes. And he has an MLS team, the Colorado uh-huh. Rapids. Yes. So he was flying to Hong Kong for a business meeting. Mm-hmm. On his way back, when he's reading his newspaper, yeah. everything people are talking about is the English Premier League. Yeah. Then he was wondering, he's like, this English <laughs> Premier League, what, does what it is have? it? Yes. That's when he invested in Arsenal. So mm-hmm. it's the same thing Duji did. Yes. He looks and he's like, hey, all these billionaires, why they, what is this about sports? They're sports-minded. So he just tailored it to mm-hmm. investment. He knew it was needed. Yeah. He knew he was going to make the money. Uh-huh. But he just tailored it to the Tanzanian person. Person. What person. attracts the Tanzanian person. Yeah. So they see Diamond, they see who Diamond is putting on my jersey, unveiling of a player, those yes. things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... The rest is history. Because so, yeah. uh, I, I was watching Azam, so I was just doing a review of Azam yes. TV and some of the matches that they are doing with Azam. And you see, us in Kenya and everybody thinks that it's younger and Simba that has crowd. Mm-hmm. You you mm-hmm. go to some places like Biashara, yes. they have got fans on on the stadium. Coastal Union, yes. I think that uh, people don't think that as fans, yeah. they have got serious fans mm-hmm. on the ground pushing their team yes. and you're like wow and then look at the investment the azam owners put into the field it's coming up with us a whole new clubhouse you need to start exactly. and everything exactly so and the moment football works i did shown in psl uh-huh. the moment football works in your country all the other sports will flower they will okay, emulate on the crop it was different because yes. um rugby and cricket were the white man sports uh-huh. so yes. they got into it first uh-huh. the psl caught up later on yes 
But look, it's, for us guys, where football is the most popular sport, um, football. We have to be the pesetas. But let me tell you, in Kenya, forget. Right now, about football. It. <laughs> for, it's for, people are going to forget about football. Yes. I can tell you for free. Because right now, you look at uh, one of the sports that is, is taking Kenya by storm is golf. Mm. We have got golf being run professionally mm. with competent people. They have gone on to the European tour, mm. and everybody is like looking. And even you saw uh, Karen mm. Country Club being voted one of the best destinations in the world, mm. more than the Sunshine Tour in South Africa. Yeah. So everybody will be like, "This is a place we are going to go." Rugby rally is also coming up. Rally rally has come back. Yeah, uh, it's come unfortunate back. we weren't able to have the. Yeah, but yes. hopefully next year. Yeah, but yeah. Phineas Kimathi is trying. Yes, rally, yeah. rally is doing some good work. Athletics. I've seen what they have done. Mm. With getting the Continental Tour was a big thing for athletics. Hosting the World Under 18 was a big thing for athletics. The Under 20 is also because of the COVID-19 pandemic, very bad. The problem bad. with team sport administrators yes. say that Can't athletics is well managed because no it's an individual sport. Let me excuse, right? Yes. The, top, the top athletes, Yes. Yeah, you're going to be very honest, are not managed by local guys. Yeah. Sure. Think about it. Our superstars. Yes. They're not local managed by local guys. Let's, <laughs> let's finish that conversation. Yeah. It is the touch right here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro at Y254 channel as well. You can find us. And also, let's talk about we are here with Maxwell Wasike as usual and Ngaro Kamunya, the director, 270 degrees. The show is not done, man. We are still going on with the show. We are just having fun here a little bit. Now, to what? <laughs> We, some of the things we are talking about that we were to talk about in our running order, mm -hmm. we keep going. Now, rugby. We were to talk about the Six Nations. Yes. That was played. Some of the results that are the latest results we had was. Uh, England and Italy. Yeah, Wales losing to Scotland, 7-6. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, France winning against Ireland, Ireland by yes. 35. 27. Uh -huh. uh, England, very big margin win there against Italy at 34-5. Uh -huh. uh, and then uh, we had Ireland there beating Italy 50-17. Uh, uh -huh. but, but also one thing that came out, a uh, big, uh, big talking point was the red card. Uh, mm -hmm. Between the game between New Zealand and, and, and Australia, Australia yes. yeah, Th that red card. What the is your reaction on that? Actually. Yeah, yeah, um, for both teams. For both teams. Yeah. First, just let me mention something. Of course, the biggest news of the Six Nations is um, Alan Wynne Jones, the yeah. captain of Wales, yes. has now surpassed Richie McCaw as the most capped uh, rugby union player, uh -huh. having played his 150th game against Scotland. Yes. The red card, the two red cards. Um, in my opinion, yeah. they weren't correct, mm -hmm. and this is why. This yeah. is the reason why. Yes, a shoulder charge is a straight out red. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think the two affected persons, persons was uh, Tunga Fasi, yes. over Tunga Fasi, mm -hmm. and uh, Lachlan Winston, the uh, blindside flanker of Australia. Yes. Now, a shoulder charge will always be a red card offense. But you see, you have to look at, at how the shoulder charge happened. Yes. On both occasions, in the first one, I can't remember who he was tackling, but the person did go down. Yes. yes. You're right. So his knees, he wasn't upright. He was in an upright position. Mm -hmm. He had actually tripped or he was already on his way going. Yeah. And that's why Tuina Fassi connected with the person's neck. Right? The same to the other one. Sam Whitelock, same thing. He wasn't in an upright position. He was already going down. Uh -huh. So like when Winston comes for the tackle, yes. and then of course now connects with his yeah. neck. But now, do you think these unjustified red cards will water down the quality of test rugby and yeah. is it high time now while rugby is on the spot no i mean look that law had to come into place because yeah. there are very many guys you have to you see <laughs> yeah. sorry yeah you that's the I'm incident saying? you see that's the incident uh -huh. so you have to you have to come in somebody has to be upright uh -huh. and if you look at this this particular one for tunga fasi yes um the guy was already going down the top the player he was tackling was already going down yes tunga fasi has already launched uh -huh. for the tackle yes so naturally he will hit the guy uh -huh in the upper side yes and it's the same thing for the australian red card yeah and you see the australian red card was again because that one was even worse yes it but was worse one, but that one had too much pressure yeah because the guy had really made a decision about the two in the first red uh -huh. and therefore uh -huh. he could he had to send this guy off uh, but, but people are saying that why give the red card when you have the option of sending them to the same bin for that, ten, that, ten that, ten that is what he should again. have done according yes. to me uh -huh. this look again yeah um 
and I think all of you are watching, that's a case that is there. Yes. Look, look, exactly, that's what happened. That's, you see, he was already, this guy, Sam Whitlock was already going down. Yes. And Lachlan like, Winston comes in and connects on that tackle. Uh -huh. So, in my opinion, yeah. it should have been a sim bin. Uh -huh. Just basically tell them, look, be aware about what you're doing. Also, yeah. they come into the tackle. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't have warranted red cards. Yeah. Um, because when they, then when the game is not 15 versus 15, mm -hmm. like for this case now, both of them lost pack players yes. forwards. New Zealand lose one of their best scrummagers in mm -hmm. Tunga Fasi. Yeah. Australia lose one of their best fetchers in, mm -hmm. in Winston and Ball yeah. So. And I don't know. I don't know whether in any way this red cards contributed to the outcome of the match because it was an upset on the side of you know Australia beating England 24-22. That was a Bo close score. Like Bo considering the first leg had ended, I think 43-5. Trust me, it wasn't an upset. <laughs> Sorry, it was an upset, yeah. but it didn't contribute. It yeah. didn't contribute. Have lost this morning to Argentina. Yes. So um, you see. <laughs> And especially for New Zealand fans, we've gotten really spoiled yeah. and spoiled by this. Winning uh, all the time. Uh, we had a very special class of in players. the class of the Richie McCalls and the mm -hmm. Dan Carters who checked into the scene in 2001 and didn't leave until 2015. Yes. You're right? So for 14 years, you had the yeah, best yeah. players in the world involved in this. Yeah. So that's the biggest problem. Um, I, I feel that um, New, Z um, uh, New Zealand they have to go through the rebuilding phase. It's the same thing Australia yeah. has been going through. We, we are actually out of time. We only got three minutes to go, but I want to talk about locally. Yes. Chisanga yes. is rumored to be coming back, and we have also... Not rumored. He's court. actually moved. <laughs> is Queen's your team? Yes. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's now in the ball. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Jesha Chisanga and Emmanuel Mavala have moved to Queen's from yeah. Homeboys. Mm -hmm. um, they are both... Of course, Chisanga have played in Newcastle and both of them went and played in Poland. Yes. So for them, I think, and I've talked to them about this decision, mm -hmm. um, when I'm inspired to go work out, yes. they are there because they are also trainers, uh -huh. like professional trainers. Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, we have this conversation and they've told me that for them, they're looking to the future. Uh -huh. And it so happens that Queens has a very diverse network uh -huh. in terms of old boys yes. and people in the Queens fraternity. Yeah. So for them, it was purely a future decision. Uh -huh. um, they're looking towards the future. Yeah. Uh, and for Queens, you're having two capped Kenya players, uh -huh. one, two pro Kenya players, yes. one having played in the Guinness, in the Aviva Premiership, yes. um, Bakropa Excellence in, mm -hmm. in Joshua Chisanga, yeah. um, a leader in mm -hmm. Emmanuel Mongul Mavala, yes. and a very good second row. Uh -huh. So I think for Queens it's a plus, and then plus their new coach. Yeah. Um, I am hoping that you know, it's a shot in the arm for, of course, I'm being biased. <laughs> but I hope <laughs> that is, I also, <laughs> the, the new coach I was referring so far. Yes, Antoine Plasma. Um, yeah. he's, he's, he's doing a good job from what I've heard from the players. Uh -huh. um, there's a lot of f fitness required. You know, the problem in Kenya is that we always want to go for the man. We always want contact. Yes. And rugby has changed now. It's about playing the space. It's about if you need to go to contact, then go into contact. Yeah. But it's always about playing the space because at the end of the day, what are you trying to do? You're trying to advance beyond the game line. Uh -huh. So I hear he's brought in a bit of that, yes. which requires then a skill set. Good thing about Queens, I'll be honest with you, is that uh, in fact, I was talking to one of the KCB stalwarts and Kenya stalwarts, Oliver Mangani, yes. Yes. telling me that uh, you know, Naro, what Queens has is the skill set. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's inside, it's inculcated, it's an inculcated into the Queens player yeah. in terms of that. So. I'm hoping to see with this thing about playing the gap and not the man. I mean, I'm a big fan of playing the gap. And last time you missed out on playoff, finishing oh, yeah, distant ninth we were, with we were, 28 we points. Were, we, were, we, were, we were in problems. Uh, Queens has been going through a transition phase. Yes. Uh, issues that, of course, I cannot talk about here, but Queens has been going through a tra transition phase that required them to go to the bottom pits to yes. discover themselves. <laughs> That's where we come to the end of the touch here. I think we'll continue with this discussion next Saturday. <laughs> Hopefully now will be available. <laughs> I told you every One weekend. hour, man. <laughs> every weekend. Yeah. We, we, we need to do something with rugby. We need yeah. to do something serious with rugby. No problem. Yes. As it comes back. Special thanks to you, Naro. Thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Max Olasike, as usual, is here. And it's a special thanks for everybody on the Touchline crew has managed to get this production a success. To Nasema, Asante Sana. Enjoy the happiest Diwali this afternoon. For me on Y254, good afternoon and enjoy the rest of your viewing.